Hello, I'm Richard Hooper and this is Sat TV Week. Now I'm pleased to be joined by Richard at Comtech EF Data. Uh, Richard, thank you for joining us. Can you tell me what's happening in the mobile cellular backhaul market? So the 2G market that has traditionally been a strong market for satellite backhaul is still doing very well. It continues to grow. Uh, customers, the mobile operators, is happy with the service, it's a proven business case and they're making a lot of money from, from uh, voice services. Uh, 3G is starting to come along and what is driving the uptake in 3G is the cost of the handsets, the devices is coming down. So people in emerging markets and rural communities can now also uh, afford data services. So 3G is a growing market from a capacity point of view and we see a lot more demand coming uh, in this market. It's a challenging market because data services requires a higher quality of uh, service and a better uh, uh, quality of experience for the end users for them to be happy with the service and down the line we see LTE also coming and uh, today it's has already started in in developed markets uh, some in North America Western Europe and in some of the developing countries in Asia as well and over time LTE will it will take up a large part of the traffic growth uh, in satellite backhaul as price points come down for satellite capacity LTE capacity or, or needs and requirements will, will go up. Also as handsets become more affordable also in the LTE space, that market will take off quite nicely. So it's very good momentum in the industry right now. So how are you meeting the customers' demands? So uh, 2G's uh, backhaul services has been well met over the years by various products in, uh, in the SEPC space as well as in the, in the TDMA space. Moving into 3G, the requirements are much tougher. 3G is a very, should I say, satellite unfriendly technology. So you really have to have top-notch uh, products with the highest level of co uh, quality of service, low jitter, low latency. So the way uh, Comtech is meeting that is by uh, our height platform. So the height platform brings the best of the SAPC world when it comes to low latency, jitter, quality of service, built-in compression and efficiencies. And we're moving that into the heights platform that is a platform that can meet these requirements for an MNO also by doing it dynamically. So as the demands are changing in the network, the system adapts uh, and, 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 and and meets the needs of the MNO by still using SAPC as the foundation, but it's all dynamic. Now, I imagine, like all customers, they're looking at the bottom line and cost. How are you helping them achieve that? So we're looking at the end-to-end -end network, and we're taking the uh, uh, holistic approach and look at the net efficiency. So when we talk to customers, we talk about uh, the end user's requirements in terms of data services, and we're able to translate that uh, into uh, uh, bits per hertz and, and, and space segment cost and, and hardware cost into a complete package that is the total cost of ownership where you look at all the components needed to deliver the service end to end from the base station back into the core network. So our focus is on each of those steps in the chain, how can we make the most uh, efficient use of the resources in those steps and the Heights platform is ideally suited to meet those demands. It's a, it, it's a key sector, the cellular backhaul market. Yes. How's it going to develop over the next 12 to 24 months? I think it will be a very interesting market going forward because you see there is a, a huge demand for data services out there. People want to get access to information, people want to get online. Uh, social media is driving a lot of the traffic in the networks and video is becoming part of, of, of uh, our everyday life. So as the price points for satellite capacity comes down and the efficiencies uh, that I just talked about that comes from the height platform from optimization, we will be able to reach a price point where it starts to make financial sense for mobile operators to start deploying more of the satellite connected sites into rural communities to serve the needs of their customers. Now I didn't think we'd ever see the day when mobile network operators welcomed satellite into the yeah, fold. Imagine. 
<laughs> but it seems to be that way. It is this way, and, and it, it, it all comes down at the end of the day of being able to provide a good quality of experience to an end user, and we are able to do that today with our technology. It was a challenge in the past, and then it comes down to the cost element. If we look at the total cost of ownership that we have today versus what we just had a few years back, it's a tremendous difference. So if we, if we tie together this with lower cost for devices for the end users, if we tie this into the uh, ever-growing need for internet services, uh, social media applications and so forth, and access to health services, government services, it's all coming together very nicely and will drive this market forward quite nicely over the next few years. Richard, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.